for the second time tonight. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to hashtag LNT. Uh, fresh episode, as I just said a few minutes ago, as we just went live, uh, out of live, inshallah, hopefully, no technical difficulties for tonight. Now, uh, tonight is a very special episode. Uh, tonight, we're talking about uh, those who have a job. Uh, you know, inshallah, everyone out there uh, does have a job and is not unemployed. And inshallah, if you are, uh, do go search for a job uh, while we take a look at what's trending in the world. Just a few moments. One second, we'd welcome everyone joining us tonight. Now, I know you guys all watched it. What a fight it was. I mean, um, you know, congrats to uh, Khabib uh, for another time, another championship to his record. Uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of people right now are criticizing Khabib for what he did after the fight. Uh, if you guys didn't watch the, the fight, the UFC fight, well, Khabib uh, faced Conor McGregor uh, in the, you know, f fight of, of, of the championship, uh, the ultimate uh, fighting championship, uh, the F UFC. Now, uh, some people say that um, he has the right to do that. Absolutely not. Sportsmanship, I don't agree with it. Uh, but at the same time, someone has to put an end to Conor McGregor's mouth. He just runs his mouth a lot, and I think he kind of he didn't deserve it. But at the same time, you know, it made a lot of people uh, happy. Those who don't like, uh, but for those who didn't watch it, right after the game, after the fight, you know, his victory. He, he should celebrate, he, he gets pissed off, he gets angry, jumps into the crowd, goes and uh, you know, be beats up uh, Dylan Dennis uh, and, and the crew of Khabib come in, come in and then they punch out Conor McGregor again, gets knocked out twice in the same day. You don't, you don't see that on, uh, on TV uh, other than uh, Khabib and you know, Conor McGregor. But that's it, he, got, he, he lost. But up to now, he's probably facing some fines uh, and maybe the title gets taken away. Hopefully it doesn't. Uh, but if it does, then, you know, just make better decision next time, bruh. But what else is trending? A few weeks ago or just a few days ago, uh, over a bit of a, a week, we saw what happened in Indonesia. And, uh, and, you know, the tsunami that hit and the 7.5 earthquake. But now it's a 5.9 magnitude. Uh, it's uh, now today or yesterday it's a 5.9 magnitude in Haiti killing uh, 10 and injuring over 135 now Prime Minister uh, John Henry said a crisis cabinet has been created to coordinate all emergency responses to the earthquake now luckily uh, there was no tsunami and there's no signs of a tsunami uh, and our hearts do go out to the families of the victims and inshallah uh, a speedy recovery for those who are injured. Uh, but that's it for what's trending. Let's go jump into tonight's topic. Now, all of us have a job, alhamdulillah. So we all work, whether you're, you know, you're, you're getting paid minimum or, or high wage. You know, for those watching LNT right now, you have to work, you know, to afford the means of watching the show. You know, it takes loyalty to buy, you know, a, a 60 inch screen just to see Ahmed Ali on it. Now, obviously, we work to get that money to buy whatever necessities we need and, you know, j just, just to live life comfortably. Some of us get, ba get, get paid uh, a pretty good amount, while others not so much. Now, each country has its own laws when it comes to wages. Some countries have a very high minimum wage, while others have a very low minimum wage and we'll talk about how uh, it's actually beneficial to have a low minimum wage and a high minimum wage at the same time. Those who say that high minimum wage is more beneficial and claim that the minimum wage in their country is if or sorry if the minimum wage in their, in their, in their country is too low then workers can't live anymore because um, it demands a higher wage for them to actually live in that specific country and it also creates more jobs and grows the economy. Now on the other hand, we see those who are in favor of low minimum wage, basically 
the business owners and people, who, who the employers instead of the employees, they claim that many businesses can't afford to pay the workers more than the minimum wage right now. Now, if it happens that they have to pay, they'll be forced to close, lay off workers, or reduce hiring. And that increase in minimum wage have been shown to make more difficult, low-risk workers uh, with little or no work experience to find jobs or becoming upwardly um, mobile. So that what leads us to tonight's question. Tonight's question, we're trying to find out for those who work at low minimum wage companies. The question for tonight is, should the minimum wage be increased? That's your question for tonight. So get your phones ready to dial the WhatsApp number that will be shown below right after the short break. So plus 964-774-067-1836. If you do miss the last few numbers, then don't worry. Inshallah, we'll have the phone number uh, pop up at the bottom after this very short break. I'm, I'm just getting my phone ready to call in hashtag and to be the first caller. You know, I'm, I'm gonna call myself and answer the question for tonight. Uh, but uh, the question for tonight, as I mentioned, will pop up in a few seconds right at the bottom. Should minimum wage be increased if you think it should uh, which I believe 100% people say it should others um, do believe business owners and some uh, employees also are in, in favor of minimum wage we'll get to talk about why but rising global inequality has made minimum wage a hot topic for many countries around the world nowadays now as governments attempt to ensure low-paid workers have the chance to escape relative poverty. Now before we begin talking about minimum wage, let's see how the world stands in terms of minimum wage. Now this chart that we're showing you in a bit is from 2013, but we can still get the idea for most countries. So let's pop that up for a second. Now the figures have been adjusted to their post tax rate and purchasing power uh, parity in U.S. dollars. Now we see that Australia has the most generous uh, minimum wage with workers earning a minimum wage of $9.54 an hour. Now next there's Luxembourg uh, and you get $9.24 after tax. It's not before tax, it's after tax. Um, so the, the top three is completed by Belgium uh, where uh, just above $8.50. So as we can see right there, minimum wage after tax, the highest country out there is Australia. And for those who think that their jobs uh, is not paying them enough, think about uh, migrating to Australia. Maybe you can get a, a better minimum wage. But at the same time, there comes something different with higher minimum wage as we get to talk about it right now. Now, if, if you're wondering why many European countries aren't on that list, well, it's because they have high minimum wages paid to their workers. Now, we all know that, there's a, th th that there are uh, pros and cons uh, to every topic. Well, mainly, you know, most 90% of topics. That's why tonight we want to talk about the pros and cons of minimum wage. Now, let's start with the pros. Now, number one. Number one, it that increases economic activity and spur job growth. Now, what do we mean by that? When the minimum wage is increased from $7.25 an hour, according to the U.S. Economic uh, Policy Institute, said that minimum wage, if it was increased from $7.25 an hour to $10.10 an hour, it would inject $22.1 billion of net into the, into the economy and create 85,000 jobs over a three-year phase in period. So what it means is that more money, more jobs. And if you're wondering why such a huge capital, 21.1, well, tax return is a lot when you have a lot of uh, workers. Now, number two, pro number two, it reduces 
poverty. Now, according to a 2014 con uh, congreg Congregational uh, Budget Office report, official report, it says that increasing the minimum wage to $9 would lift 300,000 people out of poverty. And if it was to increase to $10.10, 10, it would lift 900,000 people out of poverty. Uh, those, th those numbers are huge, huge numbers. Now, pro number three is that it reduces government welfare spending. Now, this is obvious for those who do live in the West. They get to know a little bit about the welfare system that goes on there. You know, the food stamps and so on and so forth. I guess who's telling me that. But, you know, it, 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 they, they get to have an idea. For those who get a higher, and if the, high, if, if the minimum wage was increased, then not as many people would rely on government funding. Now, it's, it's a good thing. It's a perfect thing. But, yet again, if the government is corrupt, where is that money all going to? It's going to the pockets of the politicians. Now, another pro is that it reduces income inequality. And absolutely true. A lot of people sometimes, they're in their jobs, trying so hard, you know, to get that promotion. You know, trying so hard uh, to get that maybe increase in the salary. But yet, it goes to someone, as Iraqis call him, Lugi. Someone that, you know, uh, tries, you know, like a teacher's pet, but this guy's like a boss pet. Where, you know, he gets close to the boss. The promotion goes to someone else and not this person. The increase in the salary goes to someone else not worthy of the position and not someone else who actually tried so hard to be in that position. Sometimes it is that case where people envy uh, another person and you know, some say, why does that person have such a high wage when I have such a, a low wage? Another one, another one is, another pro is, uh, the fifth pro, is that it increases worker uh, productivity and reduces employee turnover. Now this is actually very true because if you see someone with a high minimum wage, say of like $10.10 .10 uh, compared to $7.25, then as the minimum wage ra uh, rises and work becomes more attractive money-wise, you see more people turning up to work. No absences, so to speak. Labor turnover will start to decline. If you get good money, then why would you just, you know, not go to work? You try to go to work every day on time, put in as much effort as you can just to get that um, extreme, especially if you're working extremely hard. You're trying to get your efforts paid for and especially on time. Now enough with the pros. Yes, there are pros to uh, the increase of minimum wage, but let's see if there are cons at the same time. Con number one, as, and, and do you know, try, try to sink in what I'm about to say, uh, because majority of the cons, well, you just get, you'll decide. Number one, it forces, to, it forces businesses to lay off employees and raise unemployment rate. Now, according to a survey of 1,213 businesses and human resources professionals, 38% of employers who currently pay minimum wage said that they would lay off some workers if the minimum wage was raised to $10.10. So business number one. So businesses are affected by the increase of minimum wage. Number two, increases poverty. And this is so true. The con of minimum wage, when you see the poverty in the world right now, any country that has poverty, look at, look at the minimum wage in that country and you'll see it. If minimum wage is so little and the products they need to buy is so expensive, you know, if you need to get a baby now in the West, you need at least within the first year, you need $10,000 from, um, from doctors to, to clothes, to food, to health care, to so, so on and so forth. You need a lot of money just to get the baby. So imagine if you're working in a minimum wage job. How are you going to make that money just to save up for your child? Or if, you, you know, if, if, if you're not married, you know, have fun trying to get married when you're on minimum wage. So yes, it does increase poverty. Number three, con number three is that it hurts businesses and forces companies to close. 60% of small business owners said that minimum wage will, and I quote, hurt most small business owners according to a 2013 Gallup poll. Now, if we were just to go through them, and the, and the last one, it was it would disadvantage low-skilled workers. Now, all of them, 
except for the one that increases poverty, but still that's the, all of them are in favor of business owners. None of them are in favor of employees. They're all in favor of the employer. Now at the same time, if such a company, for example, you know, just to throw a random company, out, any company out there, you know, if, if they put a statement out right now and then we're with a lot of protests, uh, oh yeah, uh, with a lot of protests going on uh, around the world about minimum wage, if they were, if a company was to put out a statement that if the minimum wage was forced to be increased, then I would lay off workers. Some will resign right away. Some will actually stay quiet and not go out to protest and just accept that minimum wage. Why? Because that's the only source of income they have. So it's fear, but at the same time, it's the companies and business owners and the employers creating that fear because they don't want to lose the, the dough. They don't want to lose uh, a lot of dough, which is not, we're not losing, you know. But uh, anyways, or getting a lot of messages, I Jasm says, but we're not going to show them because uh, what's going on? De technical difficulties uh, again, so inshallah we can resolve them uh, very soon. Now, uh, what does the public opinion say about this? Do they say that should minimum wage be increased or should they not? Now, another poll in May of 2015 uh, conducted by the New York Times found that 86% of Democrats, 50% of Republicans, and 76% of, of uh, independents were in favor of raising the minimum wage to $10.10 and 67% and of men and 75% of women were in favor as well. And guess what? If you call in or text, I'm in favor of that as well. So, you know, just thought out there. Now, public support and, and you know, for, for, for raising the minimum wage hasn't just started, you know, a few days ago. No, no, it, it, it began and it goes uh, as, as far back as 1994. Another Gallup poll in 2013, 2013 found that 50% of small business owners were opposed to raising the minimum wage to $9.50. So they're not even considering $10.10. They won't even go up to $9.50 an hour. And the other 50 believe uh, that such an increase would hurt small business owners. Let that sink increase in the minimum wage will help the employee but won't help the employer. Well, that's actually true because, you know, who's affected by it? It's only the employer. But another poll which was conducted uh, by the Wall Street Journal found that 49% of small business owners favored raising the minimum wage while 51% were opposed to it. Now, with all these polls, with all these gallops and with all these researches done, what does Islam say about minimum wage? Is there, or just wage in general? We'll find out, but after this short break. Welcome everyone joining us tonight. Uh, now, we do apologize for those who texted us. Well, we, we technical difficulties, we can't show uh, the text messages, but um, before the break, that, that like five, ten second break, uh, we were talking about minimum wage. And the question for tonight is right there uh, at the bottom. Should minimum wage be increased? The number to call in is plus nine six four seven seven four zero six seven eighteen thirty six uh, to share your opinion with us about tonight's question. Now, what does Islam say about wages in general? Now we'll begin with Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, where he says, basically sums uh, this whole thing up by one hadith, he says, pay the laborer his wage before his, wet, his sweat dries out. So basically, don't wait, well, uh, now they're waiting until the end of the month to pay you that check, but basically what they're saying is pay the employee his wage when it's due. A lot of companies do um, take a day or two days uh, to pay their, 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 their employees. That shouldn't be okay. Although it's minimum wage, but sometimes it's delayed at the same time. Prophet Muhammad also says that whoever employs someone to work for him, he must specify for him his wage in advance. 
A lot of people sometimes when they're in desperate need of a job, they'll go into a job so desperate and they need to work and stuff, but when the paycheck or when it's time to get serious, they sit down and they find out that the, minute, that, 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 the, the, the wage that they're getting is minimum. You know, they can't even pay the bills. Then something is going is, is gonna to not work out. So at the same time, this goes back to the employer. The employer, especially in Middle Eastern countries, um, the, the person comes to work, works for a month, and then at the end of the month when he's trying to get paid, he gets surprised uh, by the amount he's getting paid with. So it's a responsibility of the employer to put this in advance. Now on the other hand, the worker must satisfy the conditions between him and the employer. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in chapter 5 verses 1, He says, The Almighty Allah has said, O oh, you who have believed, fulfill all your contracts. Whatever contract you have between you and your brother, between you and your employer, fulfill that contract. And that goes both ways as well. The employer cannot exploit the employee, which is happening in many countries uh, around the world now, where the employer is exploiting uh, the employees, giving him more jobs which are not written in his job description or her job description. Now, through these, we can conclude that Islam really regards to put an emphasis uh, on the right given, uh, giving the proper wage to those who are in need. If you see that in your country, that wage that you're giving to your employee is not sufficing his needs, then you should increase your wage. You should be with those who want to increase their wage. Because taking $2, $3 out, although you maybe have a lot, but at the same time, Islamically speaking, you have to suffice, the wage you're giving him has to suffice him, the rent or the mortgage or the car or his family. So you have to think of all of that as well. Now, at the end, it's easy to say, and it's easy to see, minimum wage should be increased. Because the world that we're living in today, prices are going high, not going down. Day by day, the gold is going up, the dollar it goes up and down. Products, they're going ex more expensive. And especially new products, if you had the iPhone 8 or, or the iPhone X, when you bought it for like $1,000, $100, now the new iPhone costs the minimum twelve to $1,300. So everything is increasing. Someone having a minimum wage, they can't get an iPhone XS Max. Come on, they can't do that. But anyways, last we can say that minimum wage should be increased and hashtag LNT is with you. But thank you for joining us tonight. Do stay tuned for the upcoming episodes. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.